Hey guys, this is John and welcome to another climbing the rating ladder video. I'm playing BDL or BDI maybe rated 2315. This is a 10 plus O game, no increment whatsoever. Let's see if my opponents here, they are knight f6. I'm going to play knight f3 on move two. Flexible move. Okay, I could play knight c3 and go e4. That's definitely an option here. Could could keep it into um, c4, d4 territory, mainline d4 territory by playing c4. Could also play g3. It's a move I play sometimes. Hmm. Don't want to spend a whole lot of time. You know what? Let's play g3. Not one of the main moves I would think to play in this position, but I sometimes do like fianchettoing my bishop. So let's go for it. Let's see what happens. Just going to castle here. I may wind up playing c4, e4 anyways. Okay, so black's adopting like a old Indian setup. Yeah, let's play c4. Let's stake out some of the space. We really have to be proactive about time management in these 10-minute games. We know that from experience. <laughs> okay, so I have not committed to e4. I'm actually thinking it might be better to play e3. Let's play e3. And... Tempt black into playing e4. I wonder if black wants to extend their pawn chain. I've noticed players who adopt this old Indian type of setup are sometimes hesitant to play e4. So while I could play e4 myself and go for that big center, I kind of like e3 in some ways too, keeping open this bishop. Yes, I know it's obstructed, but black's moving pretty quickly, and I think it could be a good way to force them to stop and think a little bit and at least consider their game plan. I know in the past when I pursued a plan like this, I can more easily play for b4, b5, a4, a5. You can justify queenside play more with this bishop at some point playing a role in the proceedings. So that's roughly what I'm thinking here. Now, if black does play e4, I'm going to play knight d2 or knight e1, most likely. Maybe knight g5. All these moves are likely to be met by d5 from black. And we have almost a reversed French-like like pawn formation there, where I can think about taking an f3 or trying to long-term lay siege to the d5 pawn. This is the type of move e4. I feel like the engine would probably like it, but a human might not want to play it. All right, rook e8. Yeah, so should I go ahead with b4? Just comparing if this happens, knight going somewhere, and then d5. I could play c5. Yeah, I think b4 is appropriate here. Let's play it. I already have a couple pawns established on the fourth rank on the queen side. So we know that old rule about your pawn structure pointing to the side of the board that you generally want to play on. I do think this is going to be the side of the board where I can make the most... Most progress, queen side. In such a situation, don't worry too much about getting your remaining minor piece out. Often the queen side bishops in many openings of the closed and semi-closed variety are the last minor pieces to enter the game. So don't sweat that too much. Oh, this is funny. I saw my opponent has a Ukrainian flag, and they also have the old Indian defense Ukrainian variation that they're playing. So there you have it. Okay, so black does play e4. Knight d2, d5, probable. And then I was looking at this c5 move. And then the battle lines are really drawn. Yeah, I could go here too if I ever want to try to snake the knight back this way, but that takes so long. Creates a target as well. Let's play the knight d2 move. Compel the d5 reply, and then we'll go c5. So here we have it. We got our battle lines. I've got this big pawn wedge, almost a flying V if I play a3. But I'm looking to make contact with black structure and play b5. I want to create a weakness, ideally on the c6 square, and start hammering it. Maybe queen a4 after that, rook b1 if there's a trade, seize the open file. Maybe in some universe my knight can come to a5 and apply pressure on c6. And part of the reason I'm okay with playing this way, guys, is I don't see black being able to attack me very quickly over here. 
There's no pawn play to speak of coming at my king for one thing. And although I do recognize black could play a move like h5, let's say, and make contact with h4, even then, my light square bishop is hopefully going to be doing a good job of defending my king. And I do feel like fairly soon, within a few moves, if I have a free hand, black's going to have to think about how to hold the queen side together. All right, so I'm coming up on a two-minute time advantage here. Take a screenshot of this, guys. John has a two-minute time advantage in a 10-minute game against a 2300, no less. <laughs> if you're curious what rating is at stake here, this is a rated game. If I lose, I lose 95 points. A draw is minus 37. And if I win, I get 21 points. 21 points. That would almost take me um, above 2600 again, which would be kind of cool. Actually, no, it wouldn't. It's better to be a high 2,500 than a low 2,600. I should, I should know this by now. <laughs> okay, so nothing has been traded here. Black really thinking. This is concerning from a time management standpoint for Black. Because the entirety of the game has yet to develop, in my mind. We're still in the very, very early stages if black goes a6, I'm going to play a4, work my way up to b5. I do still need to address the undefended rook in the event of something like that. Let's say a6, a4, knight f8. I would definitely expect knight f8 sometime soon, by the way, if not on the next move. I would need to secure my, my rook on a1, whether it's with bishop b2 or maybe rook b1 getting off the file, so that on b5, a takes b5, I'm not pinned. Wow, black under five minutes now. Really not looking good for them. You always wonder if there's connection issues, but black's connection seems fine. If I flip it around and look at it from their standpoint, I mean, I see what's coming, but it doesn't look like anything completely unusual. Maybe black will think about even trying to fight me. Well, there you go. B6. Flip this back around. Do you guys ever do that, by the way? Flip it and look at it from your opponent's perspective. I don't really advocate it, but it's kind of interesting to do sometimes. Yeah, so B6. So black is taking the line that they want to try to slow me down and apply some counter pressure here. I could still consider B5. Sometimes you can go C takes B5 and then C6. In this case, I don't really see that panning out. So I'd say candidates here are A4. Knight b3, rook b1. Maybe black's bishop is going to work its way out here. Uh, queen a4 certainly I can consider. Queen a4, maybe black will play b5 followed by a5 though. Yeah, the tension, the tension is interesting to consider here because I have to consider black not only taking on c5 but also the a5 move. I mean, rook b1 strikes me as a pretty flexible move here because then I can meet a5 with a3. Kind of like the look of that. Maybe black will play b5, but then I can go a4. I'm going to play rook b1. And if bishop a6, probably rook e1, bishop d3, maybe rook b2, followed by bishop f1. Try to trade their light square bishop. But okay, black very quickly plays a5. Looking at this b5 reply again, Maybe it doesn't do much because take c6, knight b8. It's like, how do you save that pawn? Yeah, let's just play a3. Let's pre move this capture. We might have a double liquidation here. a takes b4, followed by b takes on c5. No, but black takes here. Okay. I wasn't really expecting that. Yeah, let's take back this way. So, kind of nice that I have the file. Bishop a6, I think, is still a probable move. Black does play it. Let's play this. Yeah, I know black can stick the bishop in on b3, but when I go rook b2, let's say, or maybe do I even want to go rook b3? That seems all right. Yeah, maybe rook b3 is a little more accurate. Because I don't think I'm bothered by a4. I'm happy to go rook here. 
in reply. So yeah, let's play this move. And I'm looking to go bishop f1. For sure, black's bishop is annoying on d3, but I can remove it, I think. And I love that I have control of this file. Black may dispute it, no doubt. But in the long run, with my pawn chain more aggressively established up the board on the queen side, and black having this weak c6 pawn, this backward pawn, I think I should have a good chance for an edge here. That's the main thing that stands out to me in this position, is that pawn on c6. Okay, black, going to be under three minutes here really soon. I got the decaf going, if you're curious. I know you guys are all interested in what whatever beverage I'm drinking. It's uh, 6.50 p.m. right now, by the way, hence the decaf. I mean, peace sacrifice ideas kind of come to mind. I just don't really buy them for black. It looks kind of desperate. The downside of black having developed their bishop this way is that in terms of black drumming something up on the king side, I'm just not really seeing it. You know, had black played knight f8 way back when? Ooh, and black actually goes a4. But knight f8 way back when would have been more conducive to a plan of trying to use the bishop towards my king. So let me try to think what black is up to here. Rook b4 is pretty obvious going after this pawn. I think they might be looking to sack on c5. Because I don't see otherwise why they would play this way, but I just, I don't believe this sacrifice. So let me take a moment, just double checking. There's not a whole lot to calculate here, though. Yeah, I'm going to attempt to call their bluff. Yeah, queen a5. Okay, so... That crossed my mind. It just didn't seem that compelling. Of course, if I take with the rook, I lose the knight, but I could take with the knight. Are they planning rook b8 at that point? Maybe. Might be the idea. Knight takes a4, rook b8. And I could trade. Mm, okay, yeah, I am a little bottled up in that case. Could play bishop f1 all the same. Might be the best practical move. Oh, I also have queen takes a4, I should, I should mention. I have not noticed that until now. Maybe I want to save queen takes a4 until they actually commit to rook b8. But this, this is definitely an option. Queen takes. And then what? I don't even know which way to take. Yeah, of the three captures, I think definitely queen takes is looking best now. So it's queen takes or bishop f1. I'm having a hard time deciding. I'm going to go queen takes because I don't see a reason why not to. And it's a pawn. So let's play it. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to deal with this guy pretty soon. But okay, black goes back. Hits my queen. Probably queen b3. What else could it be? Also have this idea now. Yeah, I think Black's just playing this down a pawn. They're probably going to put a rook on b8 so they can rule this out. Maybe they'll allow rook b7, but I think putting a rook on b8 or playing rook a7 is pretty natural. There Black goes. Okay, so is it time to try to get rid of this bishop? It's a pretty big thorn in my side. If takes, I definitely don't mind taking with the pawn. Yeah, let's just play bishop f1. I want to keep that time edge, guys. The dynamic is so different when it's 10-0 versus 10 plus 2 or 10 plus 5. And I'm trying to make these videos a little bit shorter lately. You guys know I've still been dealing with this voice issue. So to give my voice a bit of a break, um, it's been conducive to that. But I fully recognize 10 plus 0 can, can simply play like a regular old blitz game at various points when you get low. Yeah, and black takes. Okay, so I was wondering if black was going to make a drastic decision like this in the near future because their prospects were looking kind of bleak otherwise. So I'm going to take. They're going to take with their knight, of course. Now, I, I guess black's going to try to put the knight in on d3. That's probably the master plan. 
Let me think what might be the best way to play and reply. I could take here, but I think my rook might be better on b4 for the time being. Could go all the way back. Maybe it's not better on b4 because the a3 pawn could be useful. Whereas the b4 pawn may drop. So let's say rook takes b8, rook takes b8. Queen, I don't know, a2, let's say. Now, nah, but there's queen a5 coming. That's kind of annoying. Okay, I'm going to play this back. Now, I might only end up being up one pawn when all is said and done here. I could, I could definitely envision myself losing that b pawn. And again, I can think about taking, but I think I'm going to take... Oh, I don't know. I'm torn. If I take with the rook, this doesn't come with a gain of time against that piece, does it? Oh, yeah, maybe I should take this way. Yeah, let's do that. Free move this. Don't actually think they'll take, though. I think they're going to play knight d3 right away. They do take. Okay, now here. Yeah, let's push. Okay, what am I missing? Not seeing it. Hit the queen. This is defended sufficiently. Ooh, and now I get to kind of firm things up here. Knight d4. Probably black will start swinging for the fences like a rook a2 type move. Perhaps I have this, though, against that. There is this back rank issue. Things are getting sharp here, folks. Yeah, black gets rid of that back rank issue. Okay. Okay, let's just play to coordinate. Maybe queen c8, though. I probably should have been cognizant of that. Okay, fortunately, they missed that. Let's go here. Now, I'd like to trade major pieces here. Queens, rooks. That would be a good outcome. Where are they coming? Here? What if I play h3, though? h3, knight e5, queen takes h5. Maybe they'll take on f2 as well. I don't know. Let's play h3. Let's force them to a decision. Just go back. Okay, so that's nice. Hmm, I'm going to go here. Queen b1. I'm not threatening knight c1, though, but I am stopping rook a2. Maybe, maybe this was a better option. Okay, I think they're trying to get their queen back this way. Knight a5 now. How about knight a5? Knight a5, queen c8, queen b7, perhaps. But then I got to reckon with that queen coming in. Okay, let's just go here. Guard this pawn. Offer a trade. Don't think they're going to take it. And then I'm going to play rook a1. Go there. Okay, let's go rook a1 here. So I'm definitely pivoting around my knights. Um, knight c1? Time to try to kick that out. They could take here. I don't know if that works. I don't think that's going to work for them, but they might try it. They don't try it. Okay, let's go here. Coordinate again. Okay, so I kicked that knight out of d3. It's on an outpost square still, but that's not as good of an outpost square. Not as concerned about it there. Knight a5, maybe? Um... Yeah, let's go knight a5. Take. Black's so low at this point, and I'm looking to swap down. Again, guys, trades are your best friend when you're trying to simplify. Make your life easier. Make it as easy as possible. Let's defend g3. Keep those knights coordinated. Congratulations to Ju and Jun, by the way for winning the Women's World Championship recently. And she did it by using her knight pair very effectively in uh, the final game against Li Tingji. Okay, take this. Yeah, now I'm just going to play this safe. We'll come back, and that's game over. Okay, so there we have it. Up to 2598. High 2500. Better than a low 2600. 
We're going to put that on a t-shirt someday, guys. <laughs> High 1100 better than a low 1200. All right, so yeah, not my preferred way to win, but this was a game that was heading into long conversion territory anyways. You can see I played many, many moves to try to cut down on black uh, counterattacking. And I think black probably could have played this better. You know, let's say just off the top of my head here, when I went knight b5, knight takes b5, I think queen c8 was clearly a better try, trying to work into h3 right away. Had black played that, I think I would have had to gone king g2 to cover that square. And I was mildly worried about something like this. I'm pretty sure the engine will say this is fine for me, but it looks scary. I am still up a piece for, for just a pawn, but it looks scary. Zero mistakes, zero blunder, zero missed wins, but let's click into the game review in a moment. Uh, it is good to go into the game review or any sort of analysis where you're using these powerful tools with some conclusions of your own. I have to do an abbreviated version of that when I'm making videos, but it is very smart to, at minimum, mentally have a few moments that you want to check with the engine. And maybe, if you're being thorough, putting those sort of notes in a Lee Chess study or just writing them down the old-fashioned way in a notebook or something, and using your engine as a very powerful spell check. So I know I'm going to be curious about the evaluation of this position here, I feel like black's probably still fine at this point, but a4, I didn't really understand that move. It more or less gave me the a pawn, and I do understand black playing bishop takes c5 because if black doesn't break out here, they don't have much to show for this pawn. I don't think they have anything to show for this pawn because also a lot of the action has been taking place on the queen side, whereas black, because of that pawn established on e4, would generally like to play on the king side. And hence, you saw black trying to shift in that direction as the game went on. But this is kind of a desperation, sort of morally forced sacrifice to try to create confusion and counterplay. But I think it was born out of this a4 move. And maybe even the whole like b6, a5 decision. I think here, black probably should have traded on b4, then traded on c5, and then played bishop a6 and just clear this whole a file out of there. They could do the same thing as in the game, but then they wouldn't have the weak a pawn to worry about. Also, they would have the a file for the rook. And I would still try to target the c6 pawn, but this looks like a better version than the game with this situation where black's rook doesn't play down the a file. And upon a4, that pawn became a target. I'm going to be curious what the computer thinks about e3 as well versus e4 and also just my technique in general. So let me accept some friend requests here. If you send me a friend request on chess.com, I will accept it <laughs> 100%. All right, so 86.5 versus 81.2. I mean, that's a fairly steady graph upwards, but I do notice around here, yeah, black's actually quite a bit better. So B6 was engine approved. But look how long Black played, or how long Black took to play that move. That was a th over a three-minute move from 732 down to 423. So even if it keeps an advantage for Black in a 10-minute game using 30% of your time, your, your starting time, that is, a greater percentage of the time that you have um, once the game has begun, I don't think you can get away with that under unless it's under extreme circumstances. And I know from experience, because I've had those three-minute thinks in a 10 plus 0 game, and it almost never works out well. Your piece jumps in to protect a pawn. All right. I guess I'll buy that. <laughs> C5 blocking bishop takes B4. Uh, let, let's see here. Yeah, so I sometimes play knight f3 on move two if I want to play kind of flexibly. It rules out stuff like the Budapest Gambit. If black wants to do this, it can kind of get black to reveal their hand, in my experience, before I commit to c4 or not. So that's why after d6, I was mentioning like, oh, maybe I'll play knight c3. Maybe I'll play the main move c4. Let's try g3 in this game. It's somewhat nice sometimes not to have committed to c4. Uh, of course, if you're a London player, you might use this move order to go bishop f4 or, you know, I play the Tory attack a lot too especially against g6, where I'm going bishop g5. And that also features 
this flexibility of keeping the pawn back on c2. So just different ways of playing here. Let's click open the, the book real quick. Yeah, the Tartakower defense. I thought this was an old Indian approach, but chess.com just calls it Indian game, Tartakower defense. Yeah, C4. Oh, I should shrink my camera here for a second so you guys can see this. So we're still following several hundred games. White, white also plays c4 in this position too. Just a space gaining move. So where do we really deviate? Wow, it straight up gives e3 a question mark. That's kind of interesting. It's only been played in 10 games. Now, I fully rec uh, recognize that e4 is a mainline move, but that seems kind of harsh to just straight up give e3 a question mark. <laughs> Yeah, but it does want black to play e4 in reply. The engines are pretty adamant about this sort of thing, like grabbing space. I have noticed that when analyzing with engines over the last couple years. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was thinking take and play f3. Engine's not too impressed by this. This does look a lot like a reverse French defense, like some sort of French terrash, where white does have two center pawns against black's one. But admittedly, this pawn is a backward pawn on e3. So this could be interesting. You know, I might try to angle towards f5 or unleash pressure here. Black can probably deal with that, though. That being said, I, I did say that in the game that I thought e4 was black's best try. But I just noticed a lot of players who play this type of setup for black, let's flip it around for a moment, they like crouching in this little formation on the back three, four ranks. They like doing that for many moves. You know, they'll play like queen c7, rook e8, a6, knight f8, um, knight g6, rook b8, maybe work up to b5. So I kind of like goading them sometimes into extending a little more than they might otherwise in this setup, if that makes sense. So yeah, e3 is kind of more of a uh, psychological move than an objectively best move because... Yeah, taking the space, queen c2, that's much more along the lines of normal c in this type of variation. Queen c2 preventing e4, by the way. Okay, so I went ahead and played this b4 move. Engine suggesting various things here. Taking, knight b6, trying to target this pawn. Okay. Black did play this, though. I was okay with all this. I thought c5 was pretty consistent. It's also suggesting rook b1. Yeah, I could see rook b1 being a useful move too. Maybe looking to forego c5 entirely and just play for b5. Because I do have this protected on c4. Yeah, and here's where black played that b6 move after thinking for over three minutes. And it's a fine move. Yeah, it appears okay. I was expecting black to more or less ignore what I'm doing and play something like knight f8 here. I don't know, bishop g4 or something. And this is what I was getting at, like trying to pressure black in this way. Maybe we trade, let's say, um, knight here, trying to come to a5. Just throwing out some moves, though. Wow, already here the computer thinks that black can give the c6 pawn and play for an attack. I mean, I just very quickly played the top engine moves there, but this is already minus four. Giving the c pawn and mustering the pieces around the white king. Probably knight f3 check is coming next because I am placing a lot of faith in this light square bishop to hold the position together. <laughs> it's a bad one in suggesting queen takes a8, which would just lose the queen, but... Let's just say I play like, I don't know, rook b1 here. No, not even. Not even knight f3. This is probably good too. But even bishop f3. Like, okay, so clearly trying to eliminate this bishop. Yeah, and I have to <laughs> start getting very desperate to avoid getting mated even in the next few moves. But again, let's just say I ignore it. Oh, that's beautiful. Queen h3 is already in the picture. Ooh, who's done their checkmate patterns recently? Nasty. Queen h3, because if I take this is checkmate. 
Yeah, and if take here, knight takes f3, followed by mate here. Meanwhile, black is threatening this. So my days are numbered in this position. So that's that's a, a method black could use here. Just ignore, I'd say this would be the default method, actually. Ignoring the whole b5 idea and trying to look for counterplay against my king. And that's why this kind of resembles like a King's Indian, but in reverse. It's almost a King's Indian attack style style idea. Black letting me do my thing on the, the queen side, recognizing that they can't hold this side of the board forever, most likely, but just going for it on the other side of the board. So I think in hindsight, Black probably would have liked to do something like that. Again, b6 is fine, but... Let's see. I mean, it wants me to go f3 here. I don't think realistically I'm going to play f3 in this position. I felt fairly committed to keeping this, this side of the board closed and pursuing my chances over here. So rook b1. Yeah, a5, a3. So this is part of the reason I play rook b1. So on take, I can take. And there's no hanging rook here. Yeah, and this was not the greatest idea. b takes c5. You can see that reflected in the eval. I was suggesting in hindsight this, like do the same thing and then play bishop a6. This is slightly better for black. You know, very slightly better, nothing crazy. But let's see. So this is still acceptable. Probably just the worst thing for black is the time situation at this point. They're down two minutes. And then a4. Oh, I can take this. I didn't see that. Ah. Let me know in the comments if you looked at this move. I didn't consider that whatsoever. Take, and the idea is to take here with the discovery. Uh-huh. That would have been a cleaner way to win a pawn <laughs> if this happens, because I would have loved to eliminate that light square bishop 100%. Ooh, I wish I would have seen that. But okay, rook b4 looks pretty consistent, and I don't have to spend too much time on that move. I mean, almost 30 seconds. More than 30 seconds, but I at least felt like I was going to win that pawn. Yeah, interesting. The engine doesn't even say this is better for me, though. It actually says black can take. Okay, and if I take here, what gives? Take. Okay, rook a8, rook b8, one of the two. Yeah, let's say back. Oh, and bishop d8. Ah, that's a great maneuver. Bishop d8, activating that piece. Yeah, because otherwise these pieces aren't really playing a role, are they? Which probably fed into Black's frustration in the game and why they might have gone for that bishop takes c5 idea. Mm. Yeah, bishop d8. And all of a sudden, Black's pieces are coming to life, and it's hard for me to organize. They're going to like chase me down like this. I got to retreat. You know, I can try for the bishop f1 move, but... Black's counterplay is coming pretty quickly. We might get into some situation where, at absolute minimum, Black can win the pawn back by doing this. Okay, so even after Queen takes a4 in a trade of queens, Black is still all right. But that bishop d8 idea coming into play at some point seems key. Okay, so this occurred. Yeah, even still, the engine's saying... Black doesn't have to panic. You can think about kind of ignoring my extra pawn. I am a long ways away from making that pawn relevant. I still got to trade this. I mean, even... Okay, so say Black plays this top move, Queen C8. Even going Bishop F1 and trying to trade here, that may be no picnic for me because... Yeah, look at this. Bishop takes C5. Let's just show this line. Take Knight E5. I still got to worry about those light squares even though the bishops weren't traded in the conventional way with the fianchettoed bishop, like black bringing their bishop into h3 or something, I am still hurting on the light squares here. So, yeah, black had resources in this, in this middle game. So rook b8, I went bishop f1. Yeah, interesting, wants me to go f3, knight a2 as well. And here we go, bishop takes c5. Doesn't like it. Suggests bishop f1 followed by queen a7. Just kind of biding their time. 
maybe making way for this again. Yeah, you can see that moves sneaking into the eval at certain points. The nice thing for me is that this makes my task pretty easy. You know, bishop takes c5, I got to take the bishop. If I take on b8, they take and they're on my queen. So I know I got to take the bishop and then move my queen somewhere. So I'm just playing out of inertia here. b5. Huh. Actually wants me to go here, or knight e2. Give this pawn, huh? And just activate. I was pretty satisfied with b5, although it does cost me some time. Yeah, and it seems like here, queen d7, queen c8, top two moves of the engine. I don't know why I didn't think of queen d7. I said queen c8, but <laughs> maybe because it looks sneakier. One, foot, one square further away from h3, but <laughs> queen d7 is even better because it hits the knight. Yeah, actually, this would have been pretty concerning because black, if they get one more move with knight g4, they're right on top of me. So I'd, I would almost certainly have to play this. But now I'm starting to make quite a few pawn moves around my king and even some sort of rook a2 move at some point. I don't know if black's ready for it yet, but it's concerning. Yeah, h5, get rid of the back rank issue, maybe flirt with this, rook a2 as well. If the king can escape, just visually, this looks like a lot of pressure. I know it still says white's better, but I have to be careful here. So maybe that's why b5 wasn't the best, because it does give black a tempo to perhaps get their queen in. So they bounced around a little bit too much on the queen side with their queen. And I'm unwinding here. Yeah, kick the knight because I thought if this I can take here. And I'm guarding this square. That knight on d4 is so nice. Just such a stable piece. Again, check out the final game from the Women's World Championship if you want to see something similar with the pair of knights. Uh, the game that allowed Ju Wenju to retain her world championship. Four-time world champion now, I believe. So, yeah. Black was gradually trying to bring the queen back over this direction towards my king, but by now I had laid the groundwork to defending my king sufficiently. Yeah, I felt like I was out of the woods at this stage. And even if I'm not playing the absolute best moves, I've got everything defended. I kicked Black's knight on a d3. Again, I'm trying to trade down. This is plus two at this point. Many ways to play this, but I was mostly looking to keep that fairly sizable time advantage when we're under both under a minute here. I don't have a whole lot to add after this. This is just making sure I don't get checkmated or run into some tactic like state coordinated in these positions. I'll remind you of that. That's that's a big mantra I've tried to reinforce to you guys over the years is in time pressure, state coordinated. Like, oh, over-exaggerate the coordination, honestly. So the fact that my knights are speaking to each other here, queen's protecting, pawn's protected, king is protecting these, I like that a lot. And I'm not really concerned if the engine says some move is, like, marginally better or something. Yeah, I'm just trading. Keeping things, cl things close to your king is nice when you're trying to go through this process of simplifying. And even the final move of the game, it's hardly relevant here because black has one second to my 23, but queen f2, just keep everything defended in this winning position up a knight. Okay, yeah, so interesting game. I mean, of course, it was determined a lot by the time pressure that black was under, this three-minute think with b6. You saw a battle of pawn chains here. And pawn play, which led to peace play, and black, in my opinion, getting overambitious with a4. I, I don't see a reason to play this move. Again, not too late to try to do something like this and maybe tilt the game in this direction. I know black has their bishop over here. Um, also, they could have liquidated and then done this whole thing. This just looks a lot simpler to me. And then we saw the really brutal lines where black even tries to ignore this and go for an attack. I was demonstrating some stuff here. This is probably the most principled way of all to play the position. So fascinating. You know, I think for my play, 
probably this E3 idea. Mm, I don't know if I'd repeat it, having seen some of the analysis, but it is interesting. Uh, maybe, maybe here I'd consider Rook B1 over C5 in hindsight. And also perhaps I'd look at the F3 move more often because I know the engine was suggesting that at various times. I shouldn't categorically dismiss F3 uh, even after all this, this happens. There are a couple moments where, like here, the engine was saying that I can play that, start chipping away at the center, get a little space, and it wasn't even in my thought process to play this move. So I should stay flexible in that regard. But you know, this is climbing the rating ladder. This is very tough for me playing these strong players with no increment and talking through it. I still want to try to give you um, feedback or advice rather, regardless of what rating you're at. And you know, if you are at this rating, I mean, congratulations to you. But uh, I think for anyone, just time management is so key. You just can't spend three minutes in a 10 minute game on a non-tactical, non-critical decision. And again, I have done that before. I'm gonna reiterate. So <laughs> I'm speaking from a point of experience having done that many, many times. It's just too much time like that. That really colored the rest of the the game by how much time Black took on this single move here. All right, let me, if you, if, let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching. This was a fun one, and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye. Thank you, Analysis Gang, by the way, for watching.